Another week and another discussion in our studio about some bad news for Williams. It doesn't rain, it pours, it feels like at the moment. And what we're here to talk about heading to the Australian Grand Prix is that the team having to make changes to their car basically to ensure its legality when it gets to Australia. So I've got our technical editor, Jake Boxall-Leg, here to explain the details of what Williams are having to change and why. So let's crack straight into it, JBL. We've got this fantastic illustration from Giorgio Piola of the Williams suspension. So that's where we're going to start. Eye-catching feature here, of course, is the upright mounting, which is in this area here. But actually, that's not the area that we're focused on, not the area that Williams is having to change. And I think you're grinning because you're laughing at the fact that I actually called it its real name this time. Or oh, the, the bendy bit. At bendy the bit at the end. That's <laughs> what everybody understands. But that's not yeah. where we're looking. We're in here, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. So the bendy bit is absolutely fine. Um, this mounting that they've got that's similar to what Mercedes run, so um, that's legal. So Williams' own solution is legal. But it's this extra bit here at the bottom, which is essentially a seventh suspension member. And uh, what it's trying to do is you get this wake sort of shed off the suspension components. And that's another thing that teams have to manage with bargeable geometry and that sort of thing. So by adding that extra element in, they can probably manage that just quite a lot earlier than anything else. The problem is it's an illegal component. Uh, you're only allowed six suspension members. Each wishbone counts as two. So you've got one, two, three, four. And then you've got the pull rod or push rod, that's five. And then you've got the steering rod, which you can just see tucked away here, that's number six. So why they would turn up with a seventh one, that's a real, I, I don't even know, I don't know how to put it, because it's just so bizarre. The regulations seem pretty clear cut, so I don't really understand why you turn up with a seventh. It'll be interesting, perhaps, when we get to Australia to hear what Williams' defence was for this design. But let's move on to another key part, and this one you can see quite obviously from the images of the car. And it was quite obviously different as well, but it appears that's not going to be on the car in Australia either. And that's the wing mirror. This is the wing mirror uh, in question. This is something that Paddy Lowe said to our technical expert, Giorgio Piola, whose photo this is. He actually said to him, I think I should get a, mirror, uh, a medal for these mirrors because it's such a bizarre design. Um, obviously, they're just trying to direct flow outwards uh, to create the outwash effect that these teams are so desperate to get a hold of. And it's a very drastic and obvious attempt to do that and it's quite smart in many respects but the fact that they're going to have to change it for for Australia is that again is bizarre um, and it's not because of the actual shape of the mirror I'm pretty sure that they could get away with this but it's the actual reflective surface on the mirror of the reverse so as you can see uh, on this mirror and especially on the left hand side mirror there uh, these are convex mirrors now you are allowed to do that within the regulations it states that you're allowed a non-planar mirror mm. so that means you can have a convex mirror but as long as it's not restricting your vision and I think that's the issue with what Williams have here because uh, obviously when you have a car behind you a mirror like that it's going to appear much larger in your mirrors you're not going to be able to your depth perception is going to be off as a driver and because you know you have such little visibility as it is I mean the mirrors are so far outboard now that a driver can't really see too much um, you need everything you can get and I also believe that the shrouding around the top of the mirrors as well from the driver's eyeline perspective especially in their peripheral vision that's masking the inside of the mirror as well so that's why they've been asked to change them. And unfortunately I think Williams probably are going to need mirrors that function quite well with the way their season's going to uh, going to start out and having to jump out the way of the race leaders. Now we mentioned at the start of the video we seem to always be talking about negative things for Williams and that that pains a lot of us because Williams is a team with a great history and many great drivers have won races and championships for them. So it's a shame to see them at the back. But in the last few weeks, we've talked about this car not being ready for testing, it being slow when it arrived at testing. Paddy Lowe, who you mentioned there, is now leaving the team, the technical boss. Now they're having to make changes to the car to make sure it's legal in Australia. What on earth are we going to be talking about next week with Williams? Uh uh, who knows? Um, to be quite honest with you, I think they're just going to be absolutely begging for just a quiet weekend in Australia, just hoping nothing goes wrong, hoping that the car works, hoping that th th they're going to be at the back. Uh, I think anything else other than that will be a miracle. Uh, so they'll just be hoping for a quiet weekend, a quiet few rounds, and just hope they can all keep it all together, because otherwise somebody else is going to walk. Will it be one of the drivers? Will it be someone else? We just don't know at this stage.